I will forge my own path. Find my own redemption. Without you! That was all you really wanted. That was the real mission. You were scared. A soldier is only as good as his chain of command. And it's time for you to stand down. No! Jacob was troubled, but he would never do this. Hey guys, welcome back to Game of Fine. This is me, Upar Datta, aka Assassin UD, and today we are going to review the third DLC for Far Cry 6 Collapse. And this DLC is based on the antagonist Joseph Seed from the Far Cry 5. A lot of people love Far Cry 5. I personally actually love Far Cry 5. It has its flaws, but it has its own great highlights, especially including the OST. I mean, that game had some really beautiful soundtracks. So, plus on that. But right now, let's focus on the DLC part for Far Cry 6. So the collapse, just like the other two DLC, is set in the same roguelike format. You go in, complete several tasks. If you make it out alive, well and good. But each time you die, you'll lose all your progression, all the th stuff that you've accommodated, including your currency, etc, etc. So let's get on with it. Let's see the major highlights for the third DLC of the Far Cry 6 series, starting with the setting. The setting of this game is actually the best out of all three DLCs. All three DLCs had the inspiration from their original game. Far Cry 3 had an insane junglish environment, island environment, water all over. But the second DLC was based on Kirath. It looked like a copy paste of a Kirath. It looked amazing. But this DLC actually looks inside the mind of how Joseph Seed looked at montana because joseph seed i think for him there are only two things that is either you're sinning or i think you're pure right so either you'll just find corrupted lands you know just black tarnish all over or you'll find just blossoming fields green all over and you'll be like are you even in a dlc or just exploring and trust me the blend of both of these looks actually amazing when you're doing the missions when you are in the dark environments the enemies also look pretty zombie-ish. Actually, these enemies are the ones who followed you before. The, they, those are not the rebels from the Far Cry 5. Those are actually your followers. But now they have turned against you because you betrayed them and fled into a bunker. And now they are actually hunting you back. And that looks insane. You have to actually fight them back. And the finishers, a special shout out to the finishers of Joseph Seed. They are actually hilarious, very brutal pretty filthy to look at if you're doing it for a long time but still the entire setting has been nailed perfectly so the graphic the level design the art design has been nailed for this one talking about the osts once again i think all the far cry 5 music was incorporated here it was you know an open textbook chance to capitalize for ubisoft on the ost part and they perfectly did so even if you're in the combat you're just exploring or you're just enjoying your time in a safe room breathing so the night turns into day it is such a mood and even in the special boss fights the music hits you pretty well i think once again the music part has been nailed once again in this third dlc as well now talking about combat that's a bit controversial here because i think the combat was insane but a lot of people may disagree on this because the combat is pretty tough it's actually hard because the ai this time around actually seems more logical they will stay in the cover the entire time they will bare minimum peek out they might not peek out if you're aiming right into them and 
and his teammate might start shooting at you if you're distracted so it's pretty hard to keep a track on who to shoot and who to not or if you yourself decide to just sit around in a cover they will actually throw grenades to put you out of cover and i think this has raised the bar a bit so i think that's insane at some part but i think a lot of just casual people are gonna stay away from it being a rogue like for matt i think i i really don't know how many people will like it but we'll come to that later and one more highlight for the dlc is that you can play it in co-op even if your friend does not own the season pass even if you just own it he doesn't you can still invite him and he can still progress and his progress will get saved no matter what so if he actually ends up buying he will resume from where he left off so i think that's a great part so before we talk things that uh, did hit low on the game let's just quickly recap on how the game is set for the people who haven't played the dlcs before so the game is set in a roguelike format and you will have three main objectives that you have to conquer Th these three main objectives are pretty hard so you need to be well equipped you need to have powers and you need to be well equipped with all your ammunition because uh, all the three objectives in itself are pretty hard and after you're done and after you're done with all the three objectives you once again have to return to the center where it all began before your mind actually ends up collapsing and after you've returned to the center there will be an actual survival fight and only after that you will be officially able to make out but anywhere in between your health dip gets depleted you will instantly die all your progress will be lost including all the money and all the abilities that you've gotten in that run you can once again play it with a duo and since it's a rogue light you can actually upgrade some of your perks that will remain with you permanently after you're done with your first run you will now unlock five different mind levels with each uh, with five different mind levels each mind level will have increasing difficulty with the mind level 5 being the hardest and after you're done with the mind level 5 you will unlock a secret ending like the last two DLCs i haven't found the secret ending for the this one yet and that's so let's hope i'm done with the fifth one uh pretty soon and one pro tip noob tip i don't know what kind of tip this is if you are a very casual gamer and if you're playing it on the console especially with the controller i would highly recommend you to turn on the story mode in the difficulty settings because it might just get pretty hard for the fifth uh, mind level especially but if you're a veteran if you're good with it if you're confident just go ahead with originally action mode because I think the developers wanted us to play in the action mode after all. And you should play in the action mode. Let's now move on to what I think lagged in the DLC. Not much, but still I think after a while the game gets repetitive on to some aspect and I think the game map could have been procedurally generated, not the like three main objectives those could have stayed there but the other things could have actually been just randomized because after one or two consecutive runs you just know that here you can find your pistol upgrade here you can find this here is a trial and after you're uh, done collecting all that you so the idea of replayability also gets affected because of this because people will memorize the entire thing another fact is that even you after you complete several runs i don't think you're rewarded enough I I think you could have been awarded some kind of weapon or just in-game currency or something apart from just five set skins. I think people are putting a lot of effort, and I think after actually completing a run, you should get something good that you can actually use in the campaign. But unfortunately, you don't. But nevertheless, at least we are getting those five unlockables. Those are basically just Joseph Seed's official outfit that you can also equip in the main game as well. And lastly. the point still remains it's a rogue like i have no clue if you're into rogue like i for myself a year ago was not into rogue like games at all i didn't like the idea of them but recently i started playing them i started enjoying them and this idea was actually insane so i am enjoying it but i do not know if you will also enjoy it because all the season pass holders were looking forward to something related to the villains but just in case they do not like the idea of rogue likes then the season pass is nothing but a waste to them and that is bad but apart from that everything in the game nails uh, the graphic is great the gameplay is great the combat is great the character itself is great the narrator is great everything 
uh, collectively is pretty great. I would highly recommend you to bring a buddy along to get the most out of this DLC. And lastly, I would like to give this DLC a 9 out of 10 because I think it nails all the pointers I have. I might actually end up streaming this game as well. So you can actually ca catch me <laughs> on this channel itself. And with that, thank you so much for joining into this video once again. And if you made it this far, thank you. You you are highly respected for that. And with that, this was me, Upharat Assassin Yuri. Thank you so much for tuning into Game of Fine. Make sure to like, comment, share everything that you can do that you can possibly do. And do make sure to check out our uh, Press Start to Play podcast released every Wednesdays and Fridays. And with that, peace out.